Scripture tells us that the risen Jesus continued to appear to his disciples for 40 days between the time of his resurrection and his ascending into heaven. So this story finds Peter and a couple of the other apostles just within the weeks of the resurrection They've already gone back to work, fishing, back to their jobs. Notice how Jesus stands a bit off to the side here, on the shore, while Peter and his crew are out in their boat. Maybe the same way Jesus stands on the shores of our lives, at work, at home, at school, at play. Jesus is there, standing on the shore. For some reason, they don't recognize it's Jesus who calls out to them. Maybe in the same way that we sometimes fail to recognize the voice of Jesus or even to know that he's speaking to us. Their nets have failed them all night long, and they're discouraged until they take Jesus' advice and do it his way, and then they haul in more fish than they can handle. Maybe in the same way that we discover that doing things our way can often lead to failure, while doing it the Lord's way can often yield better results. Of course, Jesus is working towards much more here than just a better bottom line for Peter's fishing business. What Jesus wants is a closer relationship with these men. He helps them bring in a great catch so he can get them out of the boat and back to shore. And once they're ashore, he wants to have breakfast with them. He wants to sit on the beach with them, spend time with them, share the bread and the fish he's prepared for them. I wonder, how often do we approach Jesus just to improve our own bottom line, to get what we need, what we want? And how often do we take the time, how often do we make the time just to get closer to Jesus, to spend time with him on the beach, to get to know him better? to become better friends with Jesus. It might be the second part of this gospel story that keeps us busy in our boats praying for success, but we want them to join Jesus on the beach. Because look what happens when you go ashore with Jesus. He gets personal. See how he pulls Peter aside? Peter, who only a few weeks before denied, not once, not twice, but three times, denied that he even knew Jesus. Imagine how Peter felt when Jesus said, Hey, Pete, step over here, get a few minutes to talk. What went through Peter's mind? What went through his soul? But Jesus doesn't mention Peter's triple denial, at least not directly. Instead, he asks softly, but bluntly, Peter, do you love me more than these? Peter can't say no because he doesn't have to love Jesus. But if he says yes, how can he explain how he failed Jesus? in Jesus' hour of great need. So Peter dodges the bullet. Of course, Lord, you know that I love you. Well then, says 
says Jesus. Feed my lambs. If you love me, show me. Feed those who are hungry for food, starving for love. I figure at this point, Jesus and uh, Peter just wants to go back to his friends gathered around the fire. But Jesus tells him to sleep and asks again, Peter, do you love me? Peter gets more uncomfortable. How long will Jesus keep this up? Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. But then Peter, tend my sheep. Take care of those in need. Protect them. Guard them. Guide them. By now, Peter is looking over Jesus' shoulder at the glowing embers in the fire. When the question comes a third time, Peter, do you love me? Oh Lord, you know everything. You know how I failed you. You know how I love you too. Please believe me in spite of my sin. Jesus says quietly, feed my sheep, Peter. Care for others. Follow me. How many times do we promise to do better and fail yet again? How many times have we denied Jesus in our words and our deeds in our social circumstances? How many times have we told Jesus we love you? We love you, we love you. And how many times has he asked us to care for others, to feed others, to tend to the needs of others? Are we following him, walking in his footsteps? The risen Jesus sits on the shores of our lives, watching over us, calling them to us, showing us how to do things His way, teaching us how to live, to work, to pray, to serve. And He calls us ashore to sit with Him, to have breakfast with Him, to spend some time with Him, to get to know Him better. He invites us to be nourished by what He has prepared for us. And what He has ready for us is much more than fish and bread on a charcoal fire. He sets this table for us. And for our supper, He offers us His own life, His body and blood in the Eucharist. And in our heart of hearts, He calls us each by name again and again and asks, Do you love me? Do you love me? Do you love me? And He invites us, Come, walk by my side, go where I go, feed, nourish, serve, and care for those we will need.